to interact better with yourself and others. Joining me to talk about this book is uh, the, the, the book, rather, The Magic of Emotional Intelligence, is author and performance coach, Abiola Champ Salami. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good to see you again. Good to see you again after a long time. Yeah. yeah. I know we used to have uh, these conversations online yes, because yes. of the COVID and all, but yeah. now you're here physically. Live. Live. Live in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> okay, so tell us now, why did you decide to write a book on emotional intelligence? You see, it's because emotions are powerful. Mm -hmm. Emotions affect nearly all the decisions that we make. The decision to... Um, to get a particular job, right, is emotional. In as much as we say that it's a need for survival, but it's emotional. Yeah. The decision to put your hand in your pocket and bring out your card or bring out your cash to buy anything, it is emotional. Mm. The decision to be friends mm. with particular people is emotional. Almost everything we do, they are driven by our emotions. And it is important for all of us to know that, yes, while, this, uh, while our decisions and our actions are driven by emotions, the critical question is, are the emotions toppling our decisions and our actions, or we are in control of those emotions? And that's why uh, I wrote the book, The Magic of Emotional Intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm taking it further. I remember a few years ago, uh, a friend of mine reached out to say to me that he thinks that all the activities uh, that we do in CHAMP around training people on emotional intelligence, he said he thinks they don't know as much about emotional intelligence as much as he does <laughs> based on some experience he had with me personally. This is about 20 years now. I remember the date was July 19th, 2001. And the experience was because we were working on a project together, a volunteer project, to act um, um, on a stage drama. And the, the eve of the performance, I lost my father. Whoa. Now, to put things in perspective, I'm a firstborn. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> so so when, you, when you lose your father, um, it anyway, works on you. And, and, and flows uh, yeah, you're firstborn and yeah, male as well. Everything just falls on you. I mean, almost instantly, my mom started seeing me differently because uh, of the questions she was asking me. Yeah, now the father. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My siblings almost immediately started asking me questions I was still asking life that I don't have answers to. <laughs> but I needed to provide those answers for them. And then the following day was a major performance. A ma and I was a major act on stage. And, but what I realized at that time is, yes, I've committed to doing this. I can't afford to leave the team members stranded. So while I'm grieving, I need to put my emotions in check, get on stage. By the way, it is live stage drama. Uh, not, 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 a not, not a movie, not camera cut. It's live stage drama. So you can't afford to commit any error right there. Uh, you know, so I delivered on it. Um, when I finish my acting, I go back home, you know, and I was managing all of that. And, and my opinion as at that time is about I've committed to doing this thing. I can't afford to leave people stranded. It's a volunteer work, by the way, so it's not like um, I will lose any pay if I don't show up. And so my friend said to me that, as at that time, we did not understand emotional intelligence. But when he stumbled on emotional intelligence, his best interpretation so far was that capacity to manage the way I was feeling so that I can always put my best foot forward and not leave the team members stranded. So mm. what is emotional intelligence? Somebody may be wondering. It is the capacity of every one of us, of you and I, to one, understand our emotions, understand our triggers. Based on our understanding of our emotions, we manage our emotions. Then also we understand the emotions of other people as well. What fuels their emotions, yeah. their needs, their concerns. And based on what we know about their emotions, we build effective relationships mm. with them. So how important is this, especially to, um, let me just um, stream it down now, to workplace? Mm. Okay, great question. You see, in the workplace, uh, <laughs> everybody, the workplace is filled with human beings, yeah. right? And when people talk about, I'm going to work, many times we think that we're going to meet brick and mortar. But what we're actually... We're going to meet human beings. We're going to meet human beings. So whether these human beings are your colleagues, these human beings are your customers that mm -hmm. they come in, right? Or this, this, this human beings are your bosses as well. It is important to note that we all need to develop the capacity to relate effectively with them. 
And relating effectively with other people, the place of emotional intelligence doesn't begin with the other people. It actually begins with you. It begins with you understanding how you even work under stress. I mean, I remember back in the day when I went for my first interview, just like many people watching me right now, when they ask you, so how well do you work under stress? You say, oh, I, I work, work under better. stress. I work mm. better under pressure. Just you to see, get the job. You see, when there is no pressure, I don't work effectively. But when you supply me <laughs> pressure, <laughs> I work effectively. Until you start to experience pressure and then you want to run away. Emotional intelligence empowers us to manage work pressure. Work pressure is a given. So it helps us to manage work pressure. It helps you to understand yourself. It helps you to know your triggers. Uh, there's a colloquial way I like to call triggers. I call them mumu buttons. <laughs> you know, it helps you know your, know your trigger. So you know the things that will get you angry. Um, you know the things that makes you fearful. You know the things that make you sad. And that is the beginning of this. It is important that you as the individual worker, uh, that you know those things. Because even if you don't know it, your colleagues may know it. And they may use it to tease you at some that's point. What I was, that's what I was heading to. That a lot of us do not even know how to help what triggers the emotions that come around. Mm -hmm. that. How do we manage all of these things and still keep relationships? Great. So it is about self-awareness. It's about paying attention to observe yourself how you work. And one of the things I shared in this book, you know, is about how to observe our neg negative emotions, mm -hmm. how to be more self-aware. You know, it's not just that you are angry and then you blot out. And the book is not also saying that you will not feel angry. The book empowers us to know the difference between stimulus and response, right? It is stimulus that you feel angry but that you get angry and then you, you, you destroy everything, you mm -hmm. say what you were not supposed to say, um, you act in a way that if they play back a video to you, you will almost deny the way you act, that, that you are empowered to control your emotions so that you channel your anger appropriately. Feeling angry itself, it's not a bad thing. It is when you act on the anger in the most unproductive way. Mm. That is when it can cost your career. That is when it can cost you uh, customer losses. That is when it can cost you huge business losses. Right? So, emotions that by themselves, especially negative emotions, they are not bad in themselves. It's about understanding them, paying attention to yourself, how you work. I mean, uh, uh, many of us have nicknames when we were in, in, in secondary school. You know, and the most likely reason your nickname stuck is the first time somebody called you that name, you got angry. Yeah. And they said, never in your life, don't call me that. Every again. other person took it up. And every other person took it up, and they started using it to tease you. But the most likely thing is that if you did not get angry when they called you that name, you just say, hey, is that my name? Okay, everybody call me that <laughs> name. The, 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 it will die a natural death. That nickname color would die a natural death. What your friends did to you then in secondary school was to press the trigger mm. that you were not conscious of. So it is important that we are conscious of our triggers, what gets me angry what gets me sad and then from that point of view i manage my emotions so that people don't take undue advantage of me managing emotions now uh, it has to do with a lot but in a city like lagos where <laughs> you're driving <laughs> and you're in traffic and someone is uh you're hearing different things someone is talking to you as uh, though uh, how do you handle all of that mm. and still be sane mm. Mm. You see, it is important that, and I like what you said about traffic and Lagos. Yeah. The truth is, with all that's happening around us, one may just want to <laughs> get out of your car and start to fight everybody. <laughs> but it's about, it's always about thinking about the cost-benefit analysis. That eventually, when you react in a particular way, what do you gain? Mm. What do you lose? The only thing we gain most times is our ego. And then but we lose a lot. You know, you can lose money, you can lose integrity, you can lose credibility. Just imagine, you know, you're an upwardly mobile guy. Yeah. And then finally, people see you on the road, packed, and then in a brawl hmm. with, with someone else. Um, you, you don't want people to, there's a way people will start to think about you, yeah. you know, if you behave that way. So what to do always is to know that you can have things under control. One of the favorite things I share with some of my clients, which I refer to in this book, is so if somebody walks up to you, and says that you are stupid. Does it necessarily mean that you are stupid? But no, but most of us, when somebody walks up to you and use that negative word stupid or foolish, the next thing we want to do is we claim that we want to prove to the person that we are not stupid. So what should be the response? But what we will be doing is actually showing our stupidity and, and, and foolishness. You see, it is said that even the fool, when the person is quiet, 
the person is perceived as being wise. wise. So there is a lot that we can achieve with silence. Silence is golden. Silence doesn't mean you are a fool. Silence doesn't mean you don't know you're right. Silence means that you are giving yourself the opportunity to think so that you can act. You see, this book, The Magic of Emotional Intelligence, empowers our willpower mm. to choose what to do. And that is the biggest thing about emotional intelligence, having the capacity to choose your response. So between the stimulus, whatever somebody says to you, and what you say, you have the power to choose what exactly you will do or say. But the way we have grown up, you know, through nature and nurture, um, a lot of times our willpower is not empowered to choose. So we just behave by rote. Mm. So because they've told that when somebody says something to you, give them back five. You know, and then so immediately when somebody says that particular thing, before the thing land, you just, just package the thing. <laughs> give it to, to a person, uh, press it down, shake it together and run Wait it over. over. You know, but this book empowers our willpower such that you can choose what to say. And you realize that at times in conflict situation, people may not even pay attention to the person that triggered the conflict. They may pay attention to your own response. And your own response may now cost you a lot. It may cost you your job. It may cost you a promotion. It may cost you customers that may not want to attend to you. Think about customers, for example. I mean, if you're someone who serves a lot of people, there are times that you have irate customers. They come, they scream, they shout. You may not be guilty of what they're accusing mm -hmm. you of, but emotional intelligence empowers you to be to calm down, to use these two ears more than you use your mouth in that situation. And that's one of the things I refer to in the book. And how to exactly use our ears more than we use our mouth. I believe that the reason God created us and our physical and our physiology, we have two ears, we have one mouth, is so that we can use our ears more than we use our mouth. One of the biggest ways to manage your emotions is to keep this short and use this more. Because at times, even when you listen to people, you realize where they are coming from. And you know the right response to give. But if if we if you're saying silence is golden, some people also believe that silence is a con is consent. Like if someone says, for instance, you're you're stupid, and you keep quiet about it, it gives room for the person to continue or to take advantage of that. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. Great question. So yes, on the one part, silence is golden. On the other part, silence could be perceived as weakness. Yeah. It is always about understanding the situation. There are times to speak up, and there are times not to speak, to oh, say anything okay. at all. Okay. So there is someone that may use that word stupid, for example, and then from what you know about the individual and the situation, it doesn't even make any sense for you to say a word. It's just keep quiet and look, because whatever you'd say could aggravate some other people, mm -hmm. and then there's chaos all around. And there are times that you may need to address the issue. It is always about paying attention, and which is the thought thing about emotional intelligence, social awareness. It's about paying attention to the environment, that you understand the environment, that you understand the politics even in the environment, yeah. that will make you understand, is it time to respond or not? Then what should my response be? At times, it may just be a smile. Because you see, maturity is important in the way we deal with issues. And maturity has nothing to do with your age. Maturity has nothing to do with your years of experience working in a particular place. Maturity shows in the way you handle people and mm. you deal with issues. And emotional maturity is number one on the scale of what it requires for someone to be mature. So it is about knowing the situation, knowing that in certain situations that you should speak up. In certain other situations, you should just keep quiet based on the people around and keep your ego in check. It is not about your ego. What puts us in, in trouble most times is we're projecting our ego, saying, me, how can you ever? Who are you? Do you know who I am? Do you know my <laughs> father? Do you know where I've come from? In the, in the house I grew up, we don't take that kind of nonsense. So I will show you. But hey, there are times you just keep quiet because silence could be golden. So what is the place of the the company you keep mm. in emotional intelligence? Great question. That's another great question. It's a great question because I believe none of us is smart. Mm -hmm. Every one of us, we are as smart as the influences we subject ourselves to. So the company you keep is an influence that you subject yourself to. The books you read is an influence you subject yourself to. What you pay attention to on the media is part of what you subject yourself to. So, you see, we, 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 we are... We are creatures of behavior mm. and when behavior is already formed we just act it out we don't think about it so if you relate with people 
on the average who have low emotional intelligence the most likely thing is you too you have low emotional intelligence because in the course of your interaction there's exchange of chemicals yeah. there's exchange of emotions there's exchange of ideas and thoughts and then you automatically realize that you are just the average of everybody in your group emotional uh, in terms of emotional intelligence some group of friends they believe that the moment somebody you know insults you whether in private or in public the next thing to do is to give the person shaking together press down running <laughs> over like 10 times some other people understand the place of emotional maturity so they say that depending on what the situation is i mean there are some friends that the way they show you that they are with you is if somebody talks to you in a particular way in public they will roll their sleeves to fight the person physically True. Uh, while that is that's their own understanding and expression of love and care and support for their friends, in the long run, what effect does that have on the personality of this friend? What effect does it have on the career of the friend? Mm -hmm. What effect does it have on the business of the person? Because it's always about making the right decision based on what is most important to us. Mm -hmm. So there are times that, yes, um, um, you are firm, and then you speak firmly to an issue depending on what the goal you're trying to achieve is. And there are times you keep quiet. It is always about the goal, not about your ego. Mm. Always about your goal, not about your ego. Okay, so for this book now, where can one get it and why is it important for one to read The Magic of Emotional Intelligence? Great. So The Magic of Emotional Intelligence empowers our willpower to choose what to do. To always focus on our goals and not our ego, mm. right? Um, uh, the, the, the part, there's a part of it that talks about negative emotions and how to manage them. There's another part in the book that talks about positive emotions and how to cultivate them mm. and also manage them. People think that you only need to cultivate positive emotions, but it's important to also manage them effectively. For example, people talk about courage uh, or confidence, mm -hmm. saying that, you know, confidence building session. But confidence is not just something you need to build. Confidence is something you need to have the capacity to regulate. The way I'm talking to you right now, I'm talking to you on a particular confidence level. Okay. If I talk to another person in a different situation exactly this way, I could come off as being proud. If I talk to another person in another situation the same way, I could come up as being timid. So it's about developing the capacity to regulate your confidence depending on what it is that you are doing. And the book supplies us tips on how to go about that. And of course, the, book's also, the book also talks about how to apply emotional intelligence in customer service, mm -hmm. how to apply emotional intelligence with your colleagues. You know, because you go to work every day, you meet with people, how do you apply emotional intelligence with them? It also empowers you to apply emotional intelligence with your boss. Some people will say, yeah, you know, I just have a very difficult boss. <laughs> At times, the boss may not be difficult. You just, yes, need to pay. you just need to understand the demands of the boss and meet it. So the book gives us tips on how to apply emotional intelligence in our professional life, also in our personal life as well. You and your spouse, you know, you and your children, you and your parents, you and your siblings. And so, which is why it is very important that champions get this book, everybody watching right now, that you grab your own copy of the book, The Magic of Emotional Intelligence, how you can achieve peak performance and advancement in life. The other part of the question, where to get it? Yeah. Just go to abiolachamp.com abiolachamp.com that's the website or you can follow me on instagram is at abiolachamp we are not saying no twitter. no 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 not saying that you know, i don't say twitter so at abiolachamp send me a message you know at abiolachamp on instagram go to www.abiolachamp.com to place your order okay. and then i have an offer for those who will be making this decisions this morning so when they go to the websites they will see the offer okay <laughs> all right thank you very much uh abiola cham salami the author of um, the magic of emotional intelligence thank you so much for thank talking you for to having us me. this point